Why would anyone in their right mind camp close to a city? Well, we're doing it right now. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, believe it or not, if you're camping close to a city, you can still live amazing. Now, when you think about camping, mostly you think about getting away from it all, getting as far away from the city as possible, being out away from traffic, being surrounded by trees, not seeing your neighbors. Yeah. I mean, that's a traditional camping. Well, you know what? There actually are some good things about urban camping, and that's what Paul and I are doing right now. Yep. We've been on the road for two years as full-time RVers, and there are some pluses, and we just want to share with you what it's like to urban camp and what to expect, because it is a different experience, and there are a couple things to make note of. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just want to be close to everything, you know, the stores and, and good internet, mm -hmm. and good, reliable internet. So that's something you, you tend to not have when you're out in you know the further out you go the less internet you get in many in many cases right and if you're camping for a weekend that's desirable but if you're living out here you start missing the internet yeah and yeah. we actually have gotten to where we do a balance between rural away from it all camping and urban camping yeah we're in san diego area right now mission bay it's just outside of the city itself, you know, outside of San Diego proper. We can see the skyline from our campground. So, so some of the reasons that you want to be close to a city, of course, are that you want to explore the city, but you also might have doctor's appointments and some errands and things that you just need to take care of that you can't take care of out in the boonies. We're still close to Costco and, and Home Depot and Lowe's and, and all of, you know, all of the things that you would do in a normal life you know, normal sticks and bricks life that, you know, you still, some of it you still have to do. I, today, for instance, I have to change a water filter and I have to go to one of the hardware stores and pick one up so I can do that. If I were out in, in the boonies, you know, it, like Idlewild or something yeah, like I that, mean, 45 minute one yeah, way drive. Yeah, 45 minutes into Banning. So it's an hour and a half trip. But let's talk about the campgrounds and just the difference between being out in the boonies and, and being in the city camping, because I wanna prepare you for that. First of all, I think the biggest thing is expense, right? Yeah, yeah, we're paying quite a bit of money, <laughs> quite a bit more than we normally would, which normally we pay nothing. <laughs> so anything is more than that. But We're paying over $100 a night yep. and we get less. As far as space, we don't have privacy, we are very much on top of each other, and mm -hmm. that is normal for urban camping. It is. It's it's like almost like a giant parking lot. It's, yeah. it's one of the things that you accept when you're going to do urban camping. Right. If you're prepared for that, you'll be fine. So it's more money, less space. A lot of them will do shared utilities. We saw that in Long Beach, mm -hmm. and we have that here. Long Beach, Washington, not Long Beach, California. Right. That's, that's good. So the difference with that is that your utilities are always on the driver's side of your vehicle and that your door is always on the passenger side, whether you have a class A or a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so you, we would need longer extension cords right. and sewer yeah. if it's yeah. on the reverse side. Yeah. Everything has to go under the rig. Plus you're tripping over it. So when yeah. you're going in and out the door, you have to like walk over your sewer hose, which is, which is generally not what you yeah. want to do. Yeah especially at night. One of the big things with urban camping is it's usually noisier than camping out in the wilderness. You're very close to your neighbors. You often hear the conversations going on on both sides of you. We've got a helicopter over us right now. <laughs> the roads into the park are usually going to be a lot more congested than what you would see out in the country. Right, so you might be near a highway. So you, yeah, you're going to definitely hear noise from traffic. So one of the things that I do want to caution you about is that there are often a different kind of people here. And I don't know how to say that in a, in a sensitive way, but there are some people anytime you urban camp. Now I have, I have met people outside of San Francisco. Anytime you're outside a major city, you're going to have people that are RVing not necessarily by choice. Okay. They just can't afford the high rent. So 
And what I mean about being sensitive about that is when I first met somebody who was like an RV dweller, I guess is what you call it. I was like, oh, I just got here and I'm so excited. Where have you been? Where are you going? Because that's the typical RV traveler experience. Well, people that are working and are just getting by not necessarily <laughs> want to talk about where yeah, you've been, you yeah, know? So yeah. I think it does take just being a little more sensitive to the fact that some people are here and they're just getting by and they're just working. Right. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. They're just, yeah, this is a cheaper lifestyle for them and that's why they do it. Not because they like to travel. But one thing is, is that the locals who have been here, like our neighbor here has been here for five years, are a great resource of, you know, where to go and what to do, the best mm -hmm. places to explore and you know where to go biking they they are since they live here they are they are a good resource yeah yeah they're locals so they know everything or they yeah they know a lot more than we do certainly one of the things with urban camping and we've only had this happen once but we were in not as big a city as San Diego but it was Pismo Beach and that's where Liz's bike was stolen and it was locked up in the campground. In the campground. Since then, we have gotten a much more robust lock, something that can't be defeated with, with bolt cutters, like the lock that we were using. That's how they got it. Uh, a pair of bolt cutters went right through it. That's something to consider when you're urban camping. I, I think it's more likely that you're going to have things stolen out of campsite. So something you do get more in urban camping that we've noticed is more of a social experience because you know we are so close to our neighbors we naturally end up meeting them and talking to them and we find it's more of a communal atmosphere you know people get together at, at, in the evening and talk and and that's really nice we like that that happened at um, palm springs too yeah yeah it did yeah it's just more of a social yeah. And it's not like, you know, if you're camping it's in some wilderness location that people are not friendly. And I, I find that if you reach out to people, they, they're cordial and, and many times will invite you to, to sit down and have a chat with them. It's much of the same thing. The difference is you're so much tighter here. It, it, it's almost like you're forced to interact. <laughs> yeah, you just can't help it when you open your door and there's somebody standing right there outside their door. I like that it's more social, it's more communal. I just, you know, like meeting people. And often there's more amenities in the parks. We have a cafe here, there's a bar here, there's a general store here that is pretty well equipped. We walked through it the other night. There's a bandstand, I guess you'd call it, where they do live music. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a marina, we can we can yeah. rent a boat, we yeah. can rent bikes. Well, we definitely like a mix between urban and rural camping. And But I could stay here you know, uh, I could see here a month or two. Oh, I think. easily. Yeah. yeah, I could, I could be here for a month without, without uh, any problem at all. Yeah. So we, we're, we're gated. We're so close to everything. There is biking right here. Yeah. Great staff at this particular park. I mean, yeah. We're... So well maintained. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just lovely. So if you've never done any urban camping, we invite you to try it. Particularly if you like to sightsee in cities, because this is the way to do it. It's a way to, you know, to, to, you know, mix the best of both worlds, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we took the bikes and rode around Balboa Park. If you're familiar with San Diego, then you know Balboa Park. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like the central park for, for this. For the West. For the West. The central what, Park for the West. That's what they call it. It's huge. So let us know what you like or don't like about urban camping. And with that, I'm off to Home Depot to pick up a filter. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. How did I get here? This doesn't look like Home Depot.